So today I'll discuss on the topic of the Gopi Gita. And if any of you have your phones, you can try if you're not able to display it. But the Gopi Gita is there in the... If you can go to this link, are there many places that will be there? This is vedabase.io. It's chapter 30. I'll just you can Google Vedabase chapter 31, 10th canto. Bhagavatam. So, the way we will be doing this is first about 10 to 15 minutes. I'll give a background of the mood of the Gopi Gita and the mood in which we are approaching it. And then we will be reciting each verse and we'll be discussing briefly about 5 to, 7, 5 to 10 minutes on each verse. And like that we will move onwards. And it's now 3.45, so we will go till about the break is 5.15. Yeah. So we will speak till 5.15 and we have a break and then we will resume again. Now the... 10.31. So 10.31. Is it? Wait a minute. It's 10.32, I think. Please. Yeah. So, the Srimad Bhagavatam has one underlying theme which runs through all its, which unifies all its diverse narratives. And that theme is demonstrated at its highest in the Gopi Gita. And what is that theme? If we look at the context of the Bhagavatam, it is... Parikshit Maharaj is being spoke is being addressed by Shukadeva Goswami. And Parikshit Maharaj had just had something terrible happen to him. That is, he was cursed to die in seven days for practically no fault of his, for a very, very minor fault. And this theme is there in even the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, but it is especially prominent in the Bhagavatam. That when life is unfair to us, uh, what do we do? Uh, the oldest philosophical questions is that, why do bad things happen to good people? And the Bhagavatam doesn't really get into karma over here. In fact, when we talk about Bhishma speaking in the ninth, in the ninth chapter of the first canto of how the pa, Bhishma is himself on an arrow bed suffering immensely because all those arrows are piercing his body. And he talks about how all of you Pandavas, you have suffered so much. And he gives various explanations and he doesn't even mention karma over there. So, theodicy, theodicy is the, the branch of theology which studies the problem of suffering. Theology is the study of God. And how do we... Theodicy is a specific sub-branch within theology which studies ultimate destination, suffering and its how it is to overcome. So the Bhagavatam focuses not so much on karma uh, for explaining. In fact, rather than explaining what the Bhagavatam is focusing on is demonstrating. Demonstrating what? That... Not why bad things happen to good people, but when bad things happen to good people, what do good people do? And we will look at it, see there are different ways in which, uh, in which something bad can happen to us. Sometimes we make a small mistake and we get a disproportionate consequence of that. It's like say, that's Parikshit Maharaj. There's a small mistake on his part. And he gets extraordinarily severe consequence for that. Now normally the way the mind works is that the mind gets us alone and then gets us. The mind gets us alone means the mind makes us feel that there is no one suffering the way I am suffering. And when you start feeling like that, that's when it gets us. Then we start we are here, the reality is here. And our perception of the reality is here. So quite often what happens is uh, that our, our, our conception, you could say, not in perception, conception is there. So quite often for us, the reality is tough to deal with. 
But when we are filled with resentment about that reality, then we get exhausted in dealing with that resentment itself. And then we have no energy left to deal with the reality. So what Shukdeva Goswami does is, he tells about the history of the universe, but therein he also speaks about how there are many people who have suffered much more than you. Oh, Parikshant. And let's look at just a few cases. If you look at in the sixth canto, the story of Vritrasur. Now, Vritrasur actually, we can say, there's no mistake on his part. Now, he just laughed and that laugh was also not in anger. It was an amazement. And because of that, he was cursed to be a demon. At least with respect to Parikshit Maharaj, you can say that he did make a mistake. He put a garland around the sage. And that was, suddenly the consequence was disproportionate. But here, what happens is, Vritras or Chatraketu is extremely minor mistake. So when we try to, when we have done nothing wrong and still something wrong happens to us, it's very difficult to bear. Even more difficult is it, when we try, see, it's one is we do some, some mistake and we get a big result of that. Even more difficult is it when we do something good and then it blows in our face and something bad happens to us. And that is the story of Prahlad Maharaj. Now, Prahlad does not do anything wrong. At all. There's no mistake on his part. He's simply trying to be a person who is a child who is devoted to the Lord. And what happens to him is his own father tries to kill him. And this is from the people whom we expect shelter, if they are the people who turn and attack us, that is extremely painful. That is almost unbearable. So, Prahlad's story is there is practically no mistake. He's trying to do a good thing. He's trying to be devoted and he gets a terrible consequence. But at least in that situation, when, Prah when Prahlad is afflicted, he can say that, okay, that the Lord was there as a protector. He had faith that the Lord will protect me. And then Narasimha Dev initially protects him through miraculous interventions. And then eventually he comes and delivers him also. Hmm. But if we move further, see the same theme, in one sense, the unfairness of life is highlighted more and more. Ambarish Maharaj, at least you could say that Prahlad, provoked his father. He went against his father. Ambarish Maharaj didn't do anything to provoke anyone also. He was a king and he was just doing his duty. So, some people might say at least Prahala disobeyed his father and his father had right reason to get angry. Actually, Ambarish Maharaj was living not in luxury, although he had all right to live in luxury as a king, but he was performing an austerity. And even within that austerity, he was diligent in serving a sage who came there. And in order that the austerity get its fruit properly, what did he do? He tried to break the fast on time. And because of that, all hell broke loose upon him. So when you are actually trying to do good, and without any intention of hurting anyone, without even defying anyone, he didn't even actually take food. He just took water. And that also, not like he drank liters of water. <laughs> just a drop to break the fast. So, absolutely no mistake, you could say. And this same thing, at least we can say that, say, we are here and the world is here and the world is hurting us. The world means there are people in the world who are out to hurt us. And then what do we do? So, the Bhagavatam demonstrates how we rise and take shelter of the Lord. How do we rise? By, by sound vibration, by absorption, by Krishna consciousness. But at least we are here, the world is here, the world is hurting us and God is somewhere up there. Now, we may say, where is God? God is not helping me. But God helps by helping us raise our consciousness. 
but among all those people who are suffering who suffer because of the unfairness of life the gopi suffering is the greatest why is it the greatest because of two reasons one is the gopis give up everything for krishna they just give up everything we will talk about the magnitude of the sacrifice of the gopis in the context as we will recite the verses but they although their family members restrain them they, they abandon it all and they give up everything for krishna and then what happens krishna gives them up it's one thing to be rejected by the world when we are rejected by the world at least we can go to god and take shelter but what do you do when you are rejected by god itself where do you do where do you go what do you do so the gopis they are the topmost devotees because you know, they in one sense experience the topmost rejection it is they give up everything for krishna and krishna gives them up and goes away and the gopis are devastated what will they do now they give up the world for krishna and krishna gave them up and at that time when they are frantic with fear with anxiety with dismay at that time they try their best somehow or the other they want to get krishna back and what do they do the bhagavatam the bhagavatam the ras panchadhyay is at one level very exalted because it is the interaction between krishna and his topmost devotees the gopis but at the same time it is also something which is very uh, very vividly applicable to us also as sadhakas so the ras panchadhyay has five chapters these are chapters 29 to 30 three in the uh, in the bhagavad gita in the bhagavatam so it starts with chapter 29 is where krishna calls the gopis and when he calls the gopis they all come they, and how they abandon everything and come is described and then after that chapter 30 is where the gopis come and krishna and the gopis have a discussion they are about to start rasleela at that time krishna says please go back now you came and krishna please with them we'll talk about that playfulness also a little later but krishna then the krishna they stay on and then the then they start uh, performing the rasa dance as they are about to perform the rasa dance krishna disappears from them and the gopis they are frantic they search everywhere as far as they can they go into the forest and that when it starts it's sharat purnima it is uh, it is bright moon and beautiful sky but as the gopis go deeper and deeper into the forest the bhagavatam describes in the acharyas further elaborate that the forest becomes so thick and dark that they can't even see their hand in front of them and then they start thinking we just can't find krishna over there and when they can't find krishna they think we'll keep searching what will we do where will we go so then they all come back come out of the forest and they come to the banks of the jamuna and on the banks of the jamuna they sit and they all start offering prayers so at that time we could say that the gopis have tried everything nothing is working they tried everything that they could to search for krishna and they can't find him and then they sing the gopi geeta this is the song in separation from krishna and we will look at how each verse each prayer each prayer okay each prayer is actually a call for krishna to come back it's different reasons krishna please come back that is that is the unspoken mood over there that is the request but that's the underlying theme and finally the third this is the 31st chapter the 32nd chapter is where krishna comes back and the gopis have a discussion with him and at one level the gopis are angry with krishna how could you abandon us and go away like this but at the same time you know, they don't they are afraid to express their anger 
because if they express their anger and Krishna goes away again, they don't want that also. So they indirectly, the whole Gopi Gita is actually having that mood of indirect, indirect uh, addressing of Krishna, indirect calling to Krishna. And finally, Krishna wins their heart by his answers. And we'll see what his answer is also. And then finally, what happens is, finally, Krishna and the gopis perform the Rasa dance. That is the 33rd chapter. So, the gopis, in one sense, they are through all the whole Gopi Gita, they're calling out to Krishna. Krishna, please come back. Please come back. Please come back. This is the essential mood of the Gopi Gita. So, we will recite. We will start with the first verse. So, you want the mic, Mataji? Or you, who will be singing? You have one? Or is that working? So, the way we will do it is, we will recite each verse. Then I will discuss a little bit on the verse. And then we will come back. And we will recite the same verse again with meaning. While contemplating the meaning. And then we will go to the second verse. And Krishna willing, we should be able to complete all the verses. So, have all of you been able to find the Gopi Gita in your phone? It is, the Acharya has described that this is one of the few sections where it is a collective. If you see the Bhagavatam, there is, it is also a group who is being addressed. Sutta Goswami is addressing a group. And it doesn't say the Rushi Vacha, it says Shaunaka Vacha. It is that, okay, we, what is that? Okay. Oh, excellent. Maybe you can. Yeah. Yeah, I can use that mic, and then you can use this if you like. Is it working? It's here. Is it heavy? Yeah. Extending screen. Okay. 
Maybe you can see if you can figure it out. No problem. Okay. So there is Hare Krishna. What is this? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Anyway, I'll speak loudly. Is it audible to you behind? Or is it difficult? Can you hear? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. And then let's move on. So, normally it is Shaunak, Shaunaka Uvacha, it is said. When the sages are speaking, there is one representative who speaks. Uh, and in this case, there is no one representative mentioned over here. It is Shri Gopya Uchu. So, we sh so Acharya is asked, is it that all the gopis are reciting in chorus? Is it that they have already memorized, they know this event is going to happen and they are memorized and they are speaking? No, it's not like that. It is actually each gopi, it's one gopi speaking as a representative of the whole group. And Jiva Goswami in, the Gopal, in his Gopal Champo analyzes based on the characteristics of different gopis, who is it? That this verse is spoken by this gopi. This verse is spoken by this gopi. That's a fascinating analysis, but that's a very advanced thing. But the point here is that at the highest level, this gopi gita, we can say, demonstrates unity in diversity. That each gopi is an individual. Each gopi has her own heart feelings. But all those feelings are directed toward one shared longing. That longing is, let Krishna come back. So, Shri Gopya Uchu. And what, what do they start with? Now, they are in the place, the auspicious place of Vrindavan. So, on Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is, increase the volume for this. When you are speaking, it was coming, isn't it? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Okay Hare Krishna Sorry our computer person is not here Hare Krishna Hare Can you increase now a little bit Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, okay. No, it's not playing. Okay. Okay, sorry about this. Mm. If, uh, if I'm not audible, maybe some of you can come a little closer ahead, but... I'll try to speak as loudly. I'm audible, okay. So now the gopis are in Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, they are in the forest. And they're seeing how beautiful this forest is. So they are asking. The, as I said, the common mood is Krishna, please come back. Please return. Please return. So as they're praying like this, here in this particular verse, the mood is that Krishna, Vrindavan is supremely fortunate. Then why are we so unfortunate? So it's not compatible that in the land of supreme fortune, we mix experience misfortune. Therefore, O Krishna, please come back. Okay. So Jayati Te Dhikam, that this place was already auspicious. But it has become even more auspicious. Jayati, all the more glorious. Adhikam is more. Janmanavraja. That because you appeared over here. And what has happened because of this? Shrayata Indira Shashvadatrahi. The goddess of fortune has come to reside over here. Because she goes wherever, wherever you go. Now, normally if the goddess of fortune... The goddess of fortune is there. Then, wherever she is, at that place, all fortune comes. 
but they are saying we are so unfortunate that what to speak of getting any fortune it's almost it's our life is going away it says to lose the fortune can refer to wealth it can refer to power it can refer to relationships it can refer to positions many things we can have people can have fortune but at a very basic level what is needed is life this is krishna you are our life daita drishyatam dikshuta vakas so tvai drita savas tvam vichinvate it is by remembering you by loving you by serving you that our life is maintained and if you go away from us o oh lord then what is the point of living what is the point of living so how is it possible that in this land of supreme fortune such misfortune can come upon us it doesn't be who as the land which you have made fortunate in that very land you are making us unfortunate therefore o oh lord please come back so uh, the, there there is a, a sense of incompatibility if somebody is very celebrated if somebody is say very celebrated as a charitable person and they give abundant charity to whoever comes and in their own place somebody is starving and nobody is giving that person charity then is it hey it's a matter of our reputation even if there is no compassion at least there is a concern for reputation and they will they will take care that they will provide so, so here the gopis are praying krishna how can we be so how can we be so unfortunate and how can you make us so unfortunate by going away from us so please come back please come back that is the mood and there are so many significant words over here jayati te dikam janmana vraja so now the gopis use the word janma in the gopi gita as we'll see in future verses there is a fascinating interplay between at one level understanding krishna's divinity the gopis know that krishna is god but at the same time they love krishna as if he is an ordinary cowherd boy and as a cowherd boy he is just one among them so we sometimes we'll see in the same words the gopis talk about the same thing as the same words they'll sometimes talk about krishna's divinity and krishna talk about krishna's apparent humanity humanity so the first verse mood is krishna you made this place for fortunate but how can you make us unfortunate by taking away our very life therefore o krishna please return so we'll recite this verse once again and then we'll go to the next verse and then i'll discuss that verse also ಚಿನ್ವತೆ ಶರತನಾಥ 
और शुल्क दासिका तो so then in this verse the gopis now start praying to krishna how beautiful you are you are not only you not only make wherever you are auspicious but you are also beautiful so the first two lines describe the beauty of krishna his sharadudashaye sadujat sat sarasi jodara shri mushadrusha that your glance is so beautiful it is like the most exquisitely formed autumnal lotus flower and now normally somebody looks very gentle very loving then they look very sweet and kind and gentle we expect them also to behave like that it is it's not only you look like that you are actually known to be like that you are suratnathate that you are the god of love you 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 look very loving and you are also celebrated as the god of love and then they say that we came to you only out of love that's why they are using the word ashulka dasika shulka is payment salary so we are serving you without any payment there are different degrees of sacrifice and the perkiras i will move forward a little later when you talk about this the atpati sutan vaya bhratru bandavan verse uh, what the gopis mood in serving krishna is but here they are saying krishna you are very loving you are the god of love and we are serving you only out of love ashul kadasika and naturally if you approach the god of love out of love you would expect love from the, he's the god of love but instead what are you doing oh lord varada you are meant to give us blessings but instead nignato neha kim vada if you you are the god of love how can you instead of giving us love take away our life you are killing us it is not that only weapons can kill it's krishna separation from you is also killing us and how can you kill us when you are known as the god of love so therefore to protect your reputation as the god of love to act according to your position as the god of love please return kim vada how can you kill us like this so the gopis have surrendered to krishna in many ways what the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita says sarva dharman parityaj mam ekam sharanam raj in dharma also there is generally the hope for punya that when we do some dharma we do some religious activity we get some piety and that piety will bring some good results for us in the future but the gopis they have given up everything just for getting the association of krishna and when they come like this to krishna at that time krishna abandons them and he says you are killing us this is unacceptable this is unbearable varadani gnato you are meant to give us blessings what kind of blessing is this one of the worst difficulties which we face in life especially in our devotional life is when now it is often said that krishna can turn curses into blessings difficult situations krishna can turn into opportunities for growth there is a famous verse maha vipattau samsare yah smare tamadusudana vipattau tasya sampatti iti ah shankar this lord shiva sees this to parvati on beholding chitrakitu's composure amid distress and he says maha vipattau samsare that even if great adversity comes upon someone in this world yah smare tamadusudana if somebody remembers lord madhusudana at that time then vipattau tasya sampatti that that pros- adversity will become the source of prosperity for some uh, for that person and itya shankar lord shiva proclaims this he has such faith in lord madhusudana so krishna can convert adversity into prosperity krishna can convert curses into blessings but when we go to krishna and expect a blessing and we get a curse the world gives us a curse and krishna converts that into a blessing that is krishna's magic but we go to krishna and krishna seems to give us a curse 
Krishna seems to be uh, the cause of our suffering. And how is it that be? How is that bearable? Therefore, the gopis say, please come back. So each verse is being spoken by one one gopi. And each gopi is pouring out her heart in this fervent plea to Krishna. And a varada. Varada means that the gopis are here aware that you are you are not just ordinary ordinary cowherd boy. You are the giver of benedictions. You are a suratanath. You are the god of love. And in this way they are saying you are the god of love. You 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 are meant to give us love. So please give us this blessing. The blessing that you please come back. The first verse mood was that you know, in the land of fortune, how can we be unfortunate? Please come back and make us fortunate. Being the God of love, how can you make us bereaved of love? Please come back and give us your love. Enrich us with your love. Otherwise, we will not, we will die. That's the mood of both the verses. Now, in the next verse, they will talk about again this theme of life and death. We will recite the same verse again and then go to the next verse. Mm -hmm. Two and three, yes. Shri Mosha Drusha Guratanyata Te Ashukada Sika Maratani Gnato Neha Kim Vada Rishamaya Pyayad Yalarakshasad Varsha Marutad Vaidyuntanala It's working now? Hare Krishna. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you. What magic did you do? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Krishna came back in the form of <laughs> the mic. <laughs> Sound system working. Okay. So now, in this verse, the gopis are saying, okay, I think we can switch off this, the electro. I think it's not working, and switch it off. The power will not get waste. So, the, uh, the first verse was, Krishna, please make us fortunate, not unfortunate. Please, second verse was, please protect our lives. Please give us your love. Otherwise, we will die. And now, in the third verse, they are saying, Krishna, you have protected our lives so many times in the past. Will you now be the cause of our deaths? In the past, there were so many dangers which befell us. And you stopped all those dangers. But now, is it that you will cause our death? How can that be? Like, suppose there is some... Uh, some police officer 
who heroically protects some innocent people time and time and time again and then that same police officer turns and shoots those people he says, how can you do that if we were to die then why did you protect us in the past and they're reminding krishna of all the times when they have that they have been protected by him and here the acharyas describe very very beautifully that actually the gopis are not just describing past times that happened to them alone specifically so if you look at it vishajala payat what is that referring to the poison kaliya the poisoned waters now the gopis were not directly involved in that past time it was it is the gopas who had fallen senseless because they drank that water and then it was krishna who was trapped but when krishna was trapped in the coils of kaliya all the prajwasis felt as if we are going to die because of this because krishna's death means that it would mean their death so they are saying that krishna you saved all of us at that time from the poisoned waters vishajala payad now in the gopal champu no in the anandavan champu is described how the gopis how are the gopis exactly involved in this past time of the kaliya they said that actually krishna was caught in the coils of kaliya and he stayed silent and helpless and the prajwasis were observing from the coast because krishna was completely motionless they didn't even know whether krishna was alive or dead at least if a person is motionless and you can touch and see me you feel some breath coming out of their hair then you can of the nose whatever but they, they just krishna was motionless and then all the brajwasis came all the brajwasis came and finally the news spread far and wide and eventually it is uh, the news also went to barsana and radharani came now radharani was a very small girl at that time so krishna is a small boy radharani is small girl and finally when radharani came then krishna decided now it is the time for action so he wanted to dance for radharani to behold so he's waiting for her to come so all the gopis had also assembled over there so and then krishna danced so krishna saved all of them vishajala apya vyala rakshasa and the vyala rakshasa this is aghasur that aghasur when he came now the gopis are not involved at all it is the gopas who had gone into the mouth and krishna says you saved them but the gopis are here referring to themselves in the collective they are saying that we are all brajwasis and krishna you have protected us brajwasis so many times and yet now you are causing our death varsha marutad vaidyantanalad this refers to indra that that was a danger for multiple direction there was the storm there was wind there was rains there was thunderbolt there was floods krishna you protected us from all of that and then <clears throat> rishamayat majad this actually is describing past times that not have not even happened mayad uh, may the son of uh, maya rishamayat majad yomasur that is one of the later chapters 38 39 chapter 37 38 chapter that happens so the gopis they at one level are displaying their great knowledge of krishna that even krishna is going to perform these past times in future and in the past you saved us and in the future you will save us so why are you not saving us now krishna just as you saved us from all those demons now the demon of separation from you is devouring us is destroying us please krishna save us please come back so here the gopis are reminding krishna of his heroic activities and telling him please do another heroic activity please do another heroic activity and save us from death so first was god lord of goddess of fortune second is god of love and third is a hero as a hero you please come back and save us so all these verses are from different directions coming to the same point please come back please come back yes third and fourth Vishwamaya Nagar Vish 
Mataji can use that if it's working. So the more we sing, the more things start working. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, this verse, okay. This verse has been explained in many multiple sweet ways by the Acharyas. Thank you. Okay, so. <clears throat> That's the gopis are thinking, Krishna, how could you protect us like this? You know, how could you counter Indra's power? They start saying that Krishna, you are certainly not one among us. So Nakalu Gopika Nanda no Bhavan. That you are certainly not the son of Gopika. They are gopis, but here Gopika and then they are referring to as Yashoda. So Generally, whenever we refer to people, we refer to people in terms of their relationship with someone whom we know, who we are close to. So, we may, if we know a particular person, you know, it's a, if you say some children and say, oh, that, that, that boy's mother or that girl's mother, they'll refer to people from that relationship. So, the gopis, they are, they are, they are women. And so, they are referring to Krishna in relationship with his relationship with another woman, that is Gopika. So you are definitely not one among us. You are not, although they have earlier used the word Janma. You took birth in Raja. They say that Janmana Raja was there. But now they will say that actually you are not one among us. You are not born of Yashoda. Nakhalu Gopika Nandanu Bhavan. You are not one among us. Then who, then who are you? Akhila Dehi Naam Antarat Madruk. You are actually the indwelling Lord of all living beings. You are the all pervading oh, oh Lord, Akhila Dehinam, in every body you are present. Antar Atmadruk. You can see not only the outer things, but you can see the inner emotions. You can see everything within us. You are Druk, you are the seer. And if you are the indwelling Lord, then why are you manifest outside? Vikhanas Artito. That Vikhanas refers to Brahmaji. That Brahmaji Artito, he beseeched you. He requested you, being in distress, that please come. For what purpose? Vishwa Gupta, yeah, for protecting the world. So this harkens back to the, this is the 31st chapter of the first 10th canto, it's the first, second, third chapters, where Bhumi Devi along with the Yutas go to Brahma and they all pray to Vishnu to descend. So the gopis are aware of this. So there is, there is, Knowledge that is in the foreground and knowledge that is in the background. So that means we all know many things, but we are not always aware of those things. It's uh, uh, We can say that we have normally 
a low resolution perception of things say for example right now if i have to speak this mic for me is just a tool by which my voice gets amplified so now the this this could be a mic like this it could be a lapel mic it could be a, a mic which fixes on the ear whatever it doesn't matter the mic is just a tool which is amplifying my voice but when the mic stops working then i focus on the mic and then i realize that i know very little about this mic and then i require a high resolution picture of it high resolution picture okay what does this switch mean what does this mean what does this part do what what is wrong what is wrong so what happens when we function in the world we often because our minds our brains can process only something some or some things so we function with a low resolution perception of things but when something doesn't work that's when we try to get a high resolution perception of it our when our body is healthy we don't even think about our body like every day when we eat food digestion is an incredibly complicated process mm -hmm. but the only time we think of our digestion is when it doesn't work <laughs> so what happens is that's the time when we say, oh, what's wrong maybe i'm not eating some food maybe something is wrong with my body so we start getting a higher resolution picture so the gopis so now when sometimes we may know certain things also but we don't focus on them so sometimes we have to gain, gain some special knowledge to get that high resolution picture or sometimes we have that knowledge but that's not our focus so similarly for the gopis that krishna's divinity is in the background for them say so somebody might be somebody might be uh you know when when devotees met shri prabhupad for the first time they were very impressed by his scholarship i knew so many verses and he would speak so brilliantly and then they they discovered that prabhupada would cook and serve food and hagri prabhu wrote in the books that we were delighted to know that swami ji's knowledge of recipes was as vast as his knowledge of verses <laughs> so that any oh he's a very learned person that's what we know but then when some other situation comes up and oh you know this also so there is certain knowledge is in the foreground certain knowledge in the background so for the gopis in the foreground the knowledge is that krishna is our 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 lover he is our beloved we are his lovers but so when things don't work that's when we focus on them and then we get a high resolution picture of things so so here they think how could krishna, krishna is our beloved we are his lovers how could krishna have left and gone away like this then they think you know krishna is not actually one among us he is he is the supreme lord nakalu gopika nandano bhavan so now based on the second and third lines there are multiple ways in which the gopis make their plea please come back so they are saying over here akhil dehi naam antaratmatruk you are present in the hearts of everyone and you can see everyone's hearts emotions so the gopis are calling over here you can see our hearts and you can see how much distress we are in please come back krishna and then they say the next line they say is that actually krishna you have descended to this world to protect this world from distress and we are also a part of this world and we are in distress so please protect us from distress and in that way they are saying please krishna come back come back so here they are calling to krishna's divinity yes they are really calling to krishna as their lover please come back but now krishna you are god and if you go as god if you see the distress of the distressed you will come back if you see that if you come to the world relieve really distress then certainly you will come back so please oh lord come back and then in that this way the gopis are fervently calling to krishna to please come back and that is the two ways in which the same line can be interpreted that that krishna if we know that you are not one among us but because you know i'm distress so you come back because you have come for protecting the world from distress you come back and it's it's the gopis we will see in the later verses the gopi now they are saying we are in distress please come back to relieve us of distress 
but later on they will say that actually we are in distress because we are unable to serve you it is our life is meant for serving so the gopi's prayer is not just please maintain our life please protect us from distress that will come in the future verses let's we we'll recite this the next verse want to use that mic <laughs> you can just use this thing. It's you. You can experiment later. Just leave it. Working. Maybe you can just sing now, and then you can next time you can for next verse you can do it. are praying to him that Krishna in the previous verse says Satvatam Kule that Sakha Udeyivan Satvatam Kule that you descended earlier the word was used Janmana but now it is Udeyivan Udeyivan means to rise so you don't take birth like us you just like the sun rises Krishna appears so here they are using that word Udeyivan they are aware of his transcendental position and then say, what do you do when you descend to this world? Veer achita bhayam. Normally, any kshatriya, if somebody is in danger, the kshatriya is meant to protect them. So, but you are not just an ordinary kshatriya. You are the supreme kshatriya. You are the supreme lord. So, ordinary heroes can protect people from some dangers. But you can protect people from the ultimate danger. Veer achita bhayam vrishni dhuryate. Oh, hero among the vrishnis. What is that you can protect them? Protect from charanami yusham samsmriter bhayat. You can free people from the misery of material existence itself. And karasaro ruham kanta kamadam. Therefore, now we are afflicted in material existence. For a devotee, the greatest distress of material existence is not the distress of old age, disease, death, rebirth. The greatest distress is the distress of separation from Krishna. 
the greatest distress is the distress of forgetfulness of Krishna. Oh, so they are saying that you save everyone from material existence who takes shelter of you. We have taken shelter of you. Therefore, please save us from material existence. Material existence is caused by separation from you. So please come back. And Karasaroruham, with your lotus hand, please bless us. Kanta Kamadam. So it is that the gopis, because their love for Krishna is so great, and although at one level they know that Krishna is God, but that knowledge keeps going back to the background of their awareness. And thus here they also refer to him by the word Kanta. Kanta is lover. So in the same verse where they are saying that you are, in the previous verse they said that you are the Supreme Lord Akhilatma. Druk, Antaratma Druk. And in this verse also they said that you deliver us from deliver everyone from material existence. But they are saying, actually, Krishna, you protect all of us. You are our lover, you are our Lord. Kanta Kamadam. And Kamadam. Kamadam means that your hand is the fulfiller of all desires. So there is the gopis, normally the mood of the gopis with Krishna is Madhurya. And it's sweetness, it's it's the conjugal rasa, amorous love. But here there is a blend, there is awareness of Krishna's divinity, and if the divinity is there, Krishna, you bless us by putting your hand on us. Later on, they will talk about how Krishna, you smile at us, you, you have more intimate loving dealings with us. So here there is the aware that you are Kanta. But Karasaro Ruham Kanta Kamadam. Please bless us by placing your hand on us. Obviously, to place their hand, place his hand, Krishna has to come back. So, Krishna, please come back. So, please come back to fulfill the mission for which you have descended. That mission is to save people from material existence. Go ahead, sing the same next. <laughs> Krishna Durya Pe You destroy the distress of the Vrajavasis. And Veera Yoshitam, you are so attractive, you are such a, such a captivating heroic person that you are a hero of all women. So, in both ways, a Kshatriya is a protector of the helpless, a Kshatriya is a protector, one of the, help, one of the categories of people who need protection is women. So, Krishna, you are a protector. 
and now here the gopis go deeper one of the reasons external reasons it is said why krishna left the gopis was that the gopis became proud and we are so fortunate that we are so special that krishna is with us and as soon as that pride came krishna departed from them now it is said like that but here the gopis are saying krishna even if we became proud what is the way to overcome the pride he says nija jana smaya dhamsana smita now if you come in front of us and you smile then our pride will be destroyed now what does it mean acharya has given different meanings for this one meaning which is maybe a little painful for us to hear is that when our pride is destroyed krishna smiles <laughs> <laughs> so like it happened when indra was furiously chowering down rains and thunderbolt and everything and krishna was just coolly lifting up the govardhan and enjoying so krishna at one level he smiles when our pride is destroyed because the pride is a wall between us and krishna and it's not that krishna krishna is happy when we are in pain but if something is keeping us from him then when that is being removed krishna is happy about that uh, as a sweeter meaning is that actually krishna's smile itself destroys pride that what does that mean that actually krishna is so beautiful and his smile is so charming that on seeing that a devotee feels you know why should i care for pride at all everything in the world promises us some, us some shelter some pleasure and that's why we seek it so pride also we hold on to just like this lust there is greed there is pride all of these they promise us some something so pride promises us some sense of identity some sense of respect some sense of some sense of pleasure not at the sensual level so much as more at the ego level but when a devotee beholds the form of krishna that form and especially not just the form of krishna but the smile of krishna that is so beautiful that a devotee feels you know just forget this pride what do i care for it now i want krishna and that's much more important so krishna even if you have become proud if you just come in front of us and you smile And what will happen? Our pride will get destroyed, and therefore, bhaja sakhe bhavat king karis mano. So again, here we will see this tension between awareness of Krishna's greatness and attraction to Krishna's sweetness. So here say, they are saying that uh, you are, we are your king kari. The word king kari is it actually Sanskrit means king karoti. What shall I do? How can I serve you? kim is what kara is to do ainand tanuj kinkaram in the shikshashak also it comes so here the gopis are referring to themselves in the, in the feminine and they say kinkari so they are saying we are your servants what shall we how can we serve you that is the name they are using but at the same time they are not referring to krishna as nath they are referring to him as sakha sakha friend so bhaj sakha bhavat kinkari smino and they are saying krishna you just please come back jalaruhananam charu darshaya please help us see your beautiful form your beautiful face especially which is like a jalaruhanam which is like a lotus so the idea here in this particular verse is krishna even if you are proud your return your sight your smile that is the best way to destroy our pride so oh, please return and uh, please for please return so there is this tension in the path of bhakti that it is said that you know, we as long as we are attracted toward the lower taste it says that that we can't give up the lower taste till we get the higher taste that uh, that if we just keep saying no i won't do this i won't do this i won't do this you know, we need pleasure so unless we get a higher taste we can't give up the lower taste that is what krishna says in 261 that param drishtvani vartate uh, that's 259 and tani sarvani same 261 also comes 
But then there is also another saying that another theme that as long as we don't give up the lower taste, we can't get the higher taste. Bhogeshwari Pasaktanam Taya Parita Chetasam Vyavasayat Pika Buddhi Samajhuna Vidyate. So then what comes first? Do we first give up the lower taste and get the higher taste? Or do we get the higher taste and then give up the lower taste? Well, the answer is that it's a test. <laughs> that means, it's a test means work with whatever you have. If we have a little renunciation, little self-control to give up the lower taste, give up the lower taste as much as we can. And whatever higher taste we have, we, we focus on that higher taste. We relish that higher taste. We remind us of the higher taste. And gradually that redirection happens. So it's neither, not only this, nor only that. It's whatever we start. So they, here the gopis are saying, Krishna, we may be proud, but you give us your darshan and then the pride will go away. So therefore, please come back. So we'll do one more verse and then we can have some comments or questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the gopis are trying to make sense how could Krishna have left us and what can we do to get Krishna back. So, so whenever something goes wrong, we try to go down a list. Okay, is, is this wrong? This, this, is this, say for example, sound system doesn't work. Is it that the switch is off? Is the mic not working? Is the adapter there not working? Is the power supply not there? We try to run down a series of explanations to find out which explanation makes sense. So the gopis in that way are analyzing various reasons why Krishna might have left us. And they are trying to address those reasons in their prayer to Krishna. Please come back. So, how is it because of some impurity in our hearts that Krishna left us? First, the initial the theme was that Krishna, what you are doing is uncharacteristic of you. Now, you are the God of love. You are the giver of, you are the Lord of the Goddess of Fortune. You have descended to bring auspiciousness in the world. So like that, they focus on Krishna, what you are doing is, is uncharacteristic of you. How can you do this? Then they start thinking, is it because of us? It's not, it's not, un, it's, it's not because of him. Did we do something wrong? Is there something wrong with us? So in the previous verse, they talk about pride. Is it our pride? If it is our pride, then Krishna, you smile and destroy our pride. Now in this verse they are thinking, is it that, is it because of some lower desires within us? Is it, is it that we had some worldly desires? We had some 
sometimes in the Bhagavatam the word kamat is used. Goptya kamat bhayat kamso. Kama is usually used to refer to sexual desire or lust. Now, uh, is it because of some karma in our heart that you left us? But then they are saying, if that is the case, then the cure for karma is also you, O Lord. They are saying, Pranatha Dehi Naam Papa Karishanam They say that Krishna, whatever sins and the effects of sins that are there in anyone's heart, in anyone's life, if they just bow down to you, you destroy them. How do you destroy them? Just your lotus feet have that potency. Pranata Dehi Naam Papa Karishanam So, they are saying that your, you, if somebody bows down to your feet, then the impurity within their heart will be destroyed. Now, they might say that, but, but, but therefore, the last verse is, therefore you come and you place your lotus feet on our chest. And krunakucheshuna krundiruchayam. Whatever desire is, impure desire is there in our heart, destroy that desire. Now, of course, the gopis are exalted devotees and there is no worldly pride or worldly lust in their hearts. But the gopis are saying, if it is there, you come and destroy. Now, the Lord may say, but actually, you know, you, you don't deserve it. For me to come, you don't deserve it. You are not, the Lord may say that, what is your qualification? So they are saying, they give two examples. Actually, these lotus feet, you are bestowing on even those who have no qualification. How is that? They are saying first, Trunacharanugam Shri Niketanam. That these lotus feet follow the trunachar, the cows. When Krishna goes into the forest, at that time, the cows, they might look very sweet and gentle and small, nice, but there can be unruly at times. And then when Krishna tries to catch them and stop them, then Krishna's feet touches them at times. Their feet touch Krishna, Krishna's feet touches them. He says that you are giving the touch of those feet to the cows. So they have no qualification. So if you can give it, give your lotus feet to them, then why can't you give to us? And even if you consider that actually the cows are pious and we are impious, then you have given your lotus feet even to the impious. And for that they give the example of Fani Fanar Pitam Tepadambujam. So here there is a very beautiful visualization of the Kaliya pastime. Fani refers to the one with hoods, that is Kaliya. Fana is his hood. Arpitam. So they are saying, you offered your feet to Kaliya. Now, when Kaliya got those feet, they didn't seem to be like offering to him. They felt like a thunderbolt. So, destroying him. But the gopis, in their appeal, they are re-visualizing this pastime. That Krishna, you gave your lotus feet to even Kaliya. Fani fana arpitam te padambujam. Those lotus feet, which you gave even to somebody who was among all animals, all lower species, the snakes are considered to be especially low because they are considered envious. So even for those snake, for a snake, you gave your lotus feet. So whatever is there in our hearts, if it be envy, that the some of the gopis may feel that we felt envious that who is the special gopi with whom you have disappeared? It is not actually en it was en it is not exactly envy. It was a transcendental emotion. But whatever it is, you have bestowed your lotus feet. Even on those who were envious, like Kaliya. So therefore, please return. Please return and bestow your lotus feet on us. Thus the gopis here are praying, begging to Krishna, please come back. So in this section, we see how it starts is, to summarize this section, I spoke on this theme of how, the gopis are considered the highest devotees and the highest and they come in the culmination of the Bhagavatam because they demonstrate the theme of the Bhagavatam the highest. That is when bad things happen to good people like it happened to Parikshit Maharaj, the Bhagavatam is demonstrating how it has, the same thing has happened to so many people. And 
at least when the world rejects us we can take shelter of god but for the gopis it is the highest distress because apparently god only rejects them and just as the bhagavatam repeatedly demonstrated that by remembering krishna by raising their consciousness to krishna especially through sound vibration everybody gets shelter and just as parishad maharaj is seeking shelter the gopis also get shelter by raising their consciousness toward krishna by absorbing themselves in him through singing this gopi geeta so the, all the songs of the gopis are actually calls for krishna to come back and each go each verse is spoken by one gopi but as a representative of the whole group so we discussed eight verses till now seven verses till now and the seven verses basically the theme is first verse is krishna you are the giver of fortune how can you make us for unfortunate come back the second verse is that you are the god of love and when we have come out of love for you how can you instead of giving us love take away our life the third verse is you have protected our life so many times how can you take our life now the fourth verse is that you have descended to the world for the well being of the world then we are a part of the world please deliver us the fifth verse was that as a hero you deliver people from material existence we have also taken shelter of you please deliver us from the real fear of material existence that is separation from you this then they say that if it is because of the pride within us that you have gone away then please come back your smile will destroy our pride if it is because of some impure desire within us that you have gone away then please bless us with your lotus feet and our impure desire will go away in this way through every very every different kinds of reasoning the gopis are begging krishna please come back so we'll continue our discussion after the break uh, any one of one or two questions or comments yes bro from the first slot as you just mentioned now and before also that gopis were praying that krishna you have protected us in the past from so many calamities and you will be protecting in the future as well so in this context why they don't know that krishna has disappeared momentarily and he is going to reappear again okay. what is the reason for this okay so the gopis know that krishna is if the gopis know that krishna is going to protect them in future also then can't they understand that this is this appearance is only temporary temporary and krishna is going to come back <clears throat> when it's the reciprocation of love the whole concept of leela is based not so much is centered not so much on knowledge as on experience that means if we consider leela to be like a drama like prabhupad used the word past time or other translation for leela is play so when a play is being enacted the uh there are different plays which have different purposes suppose suppose sometimes somebody watches like a maybe a suspense movie then the whole purpose of watching that movie is who who's who done it it's a who done it movie is this person the thief is this person the thief is this person the thief and then after that what happens is sometimes there are movie reviews on on newspapers or website this is spoiler alert that is that that some somebody tells you know oh this somebody is telling the end of the movie hey don't tell it i i will not enjoy if i watch it so let me watch it myself so that it sometimes when it's like a suspense novel a suspense novel or suspense movie the its knowledge hare krishna its knowledge that is being sought over there and once you know it's over but sometimes some some say some movies some novels become classics and people read them again and again not because they don't know the story it is because they want to relish the different flavors okay this character spoke like this this happened like this oh this scene is so good so the whole purpose of leela is like that it's not knowledge it's experience it is that krishna leela is the whole setting of krishna leela is so that krishna and the gopis both can experience experience love reciprocation 
and thus Krishna conceals his divinity and sometimes reveals his divinity. The gopis sometimes forget Krishna's divinity and sometimes remember Krishna's divinity. And the whole setting is such that everybody can experience. So the focus here is on experience, it's not on knowledge. Uh, and the just like a drama, what is the what is the parameter by which you can say that a particular drama is very good? That everybody gets transported to the realm of the drama. And most important, first the actors have to enter into that role. The more the actors enter the, enter the role, then the more the, the audience can also enter into that role. So when the gopis are performing this pastimes, it's under the whole, the whole of Vrindavan is under Yoga Maya. So under Yoga Maya, the gopis are not exactly aware of Krishna's divinity. So the mood here is that Krishna, you have gone away from us. And how can we live without you? Please come back. The whole idea is experience, experience. Now the same question can be extended to our level. And we'll be discussing about, you know, please come back, this prayer, how it applies to our level in the next half. But we can say that if Krishna, does Krishna know when we are going to go back to him? And if you say Krishna knows, then we are not going to go back earlier than that. Then why strive and practice bhakti now? If you are going to go back to him after 100 lifetimes, then why strive and practice bhakti for the remaining 99 lifetimes? We just practice in the 100th lifetime only. No, the point is, a devotee wants to experience the relationship with Krishna. And if you want to, if we serve him, even if we don't go back for a hundred lifetimes, during those hundred lifetimes, our life will be better. We will, our life will be richer. We will be stronger in facing life's adversities. And most importantly, we'll be able to serve Krishna in this world. We'll be experience, we will be able to experience that relationship with Krishna. So, in the, that's the difference between rasa and jnana. Our purpose when we are focusing on Leela is not so much Jnana as Rasa, not so much knowledge as experience. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mataji. Okay. I just want to say I, I appreciate your, um, in the beginning, your first perspective or perception of of the Bhagavatam uh, highlighting like what we think we're suffering well here's you're going to see some suffering in the Bhagavatam and it's what you're suffering is not so you know so terrible but then uh I never thought of it like that. It's just it's a series of narrations about the devotees of the Lord who are put in a suffering condition. Is that right? Yes. And thank you. how they are uh, tolerated or overcame by surrendering by remembering. Yes. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Actually, that that particular perspective, if we get in the Bhagavatam, becomes much more relatable for us, much more relevant for us. We may say it's a duty of a person about to die and we all know we are going to die. But somehow that death doesn't seem to be proximate to us, even if it is. But we all have experienced adversity and adversity does seem close to us. So that perspective can help us see the Bhagavatam as much more relevant for us. And the Bhagavatam's mood is not so much to resist adversity, but to transcend as adversity. So the Mahabharata's mood is to resist. Mahabharata Ramayana, there, if you see, of course, there also the tolerance is there, but the Pandavas fight a war. And when adversities befall them, they fight a war and they regain the kingdom. That's also one approach to adversity. If that's what is best for our service, if that's what is best for our service, we may do that. Uh, so, but, the, in Parishit Maharaj, in the case, he is not resisting adversity. When that curse comes, the Bhagavatam says that he has the power to counter curse. But he chooses not to counter curse. He accepts it. And he accepts it and what does he do thereby? He raises his consciousness. He transcends. So that is the mood of the Bhagavatam throughout. Okay. So thank you very much. We will assemble at around 5.30.
and we will discuss the remaining verses at that time thank you hari krishna